Okay, so Deborah, I'm gonna uh, remove myself from the stream, uh, and thanks again for uh, you know for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your time, and you know as I've said earlier, Deborah has a lot of courses. I've actually, you know, I've been to some of the forums, or say on Facebook, you know, on like JavaScript forums and Angular forums, and I see your name there. And uh, people have been recommending your courses to other people who's been asking about courses. So that's you know that's that's great. <laughs> Uh, and you know we're uh, lucky and thankful to to have you here uh, today. All right, Thank I'm, you gonna, so much for having me. I'm gonna let you get on with your talk now, and I'll be back uh, after your talk. All right, thanks. Okay, hey, we're gonna talk about ArcsJS and Angular, specifically some pipeline patterns. Um, as they mentioned, my name is Deborah Karata. Uh, my courses are actually on Pluralsight. And Pluralsight is doing a free April, and there are um, uh, one more day. <laughs> There's one more day of April, um, so you can watch any of my courses for free. Uh, someone was asking about an RxJS course. I have one called RxJS and Angular Reactive Development. I also have an NGRX course. Um, so I'm a Pluralsight author and a software developer, and there you see me at um, one of my uh, favorite places on the planet. Um, it's really sad that we can't be together in um, Singapore this year. So I just thought I'd post a few happy memories and uh, hope that we are able to get together um, for this conference next year. Okay, so what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the retrieve related data pipeline, look up reference property grouping and autocomplete. So those are the four we're going to cover during my uh, time here. So uh, first of all, sometimes people ask me, you know, how do you even think about these pipelines? How do you think about how you actually apply RxJS to a problem? And so I have a tip here. Start with what is it that you have? What do you want? And when do you want it? And by answering these questions, it helps you kind of think about what you need your pipelines to do. So we're going to go through um, these questions with our four pipeline examples. So we're going to start with this one, retrieve related data pipeline. So in this particular UI, the user um, types in a username and clicks the button, and then they get the list of posts that that user has um, written. So our questions, what do we have? Well we have the username. So the user is going to type in the username and then click that little search button. And we then, um, so the answer is, what do we want? When they click on it, we want to get the posts for that user. Now, our problem is that our post has a user ID, not the user name. So what we're going to need to do is do a related data lookup. So our, um, user ID here, we're going to take that and find it in our user uh, uh, API and the, for, call the back end to uh, look up that username. Then we're going to pull off the ID and use it to find all of the posts for that user. So we've got a related uh, data issue here. Well, when do we want it? Well, we want it anytime the user modifies uh, the username and uh, clicks this search to search for their posts. Whenever you hear that we want to do something with our pipeline based on an action, and in this case, it's a user action, then there's always something that you want to think about. And that leads us to our next tip. To respond to an action, we need to create a subject or behavior subject, especially if you do a lot of Angular work frequently our um, observables are given to us, right? We do a, um, our, a, an HTTP get, and it comes back with an observable for us. We didn't have to create it, we just get it back. Same thing if we use routing or if we use um, value changes observable with our forms. Um, but if we want to react to an action that's going on in our UI, we want to use a behavior subject or a subject. So what does that look like? So here's a common pattern for when you use a subject. First, we define a private property and use that to use new and create the subject. The um, uh, 
generic um, uh, argument here defines what is going to be injected into that um, stream. So in this case, we have a string because we want the username. We're making it private here because we don't want any of the other bits of our code to be able to access this subject directly. We don't want any other code to directly emit stuff or potentially uh, replace the observable or generate an error or um, complete it. But we do want user uh, other parts of the application to be able to subscribe to it. So to do that, we expose the observable, the read-only part of that. So we're going to create a second property that is the observable read-only part that's going to get emissions. And that emission, again, is the username string um, that the user typed in. So our user interface will call a method in our service, which will emit that into our stream. Now, the primary difference between a subject and a behavior subject is when you um, subscribe to a subject, you don't get anything. Then it will emit and you'll get that first emission. With a behavior subject, you always get something. You either get the default, which you specify here in the constructor, or you get its last emitted value if you subscribe after it's already started emitting. Okay. So that's subject and behavior subject. So what does that have to do with our pattern? Well, we are going to use our uh, subject, our entered user, and we're going to pipe it through. So the first thing we're going to do is use a switch map. Why a switch map and not a merge map or a concat map? Because anytime um, the user switches what they've selected, they type in a different username and click the um, uh, find button. We want to cancel that and switch over to the new one. So we're going to take that username and we're going to use it um, to get our user. Now, notice that this is actually an array and not a single user. That's because in my particular case, my API, uh, uh, when I use a query, it has no idea how many they're supposed to be. Now, there should only be one user in there with that username, but our API doesn't know that. Um, so here it's using um, regular expressions, the hat and the dollar here, to ensure that there's an exact match. Um, but the API thinks it could be returning multiple entries, and so therefore it's a user array here. Once we have that, so it uses regular expressions and returns an array. Once we have that set of users, then we pull off the zeroth one, the first one in the array, and we use that to get all of the posts for that user ID. Okay, so that doesn't look too horrible, but there's a couple of issues. Um, first of all, we have to get this first user, um, which could be problematic if it didn't find that user. So some questions that might come up in looking at this code. First of all, where's our exception handling? You know, anytime you're uh, hitting an HTTP um, kind of scenario, there's a huge possibility for all sorts of different kinds of errors. So you need to be uh, thinking about that. And second of all, what if that username isn't found? This accessing of user zero is going to throw a runtime um, exception, which is never a good thing. So how are we going to deal with um, these issues? That leads us to our next tip, refactor code into manageable and reusable pieces. Sometimes you see um, RxJS pipelines that are just these huge things. And my tip here is if you refactor them into smaller bits, they're not only um, better able to be understood, um, but they're also better able to be tested and to be reused. So let's see how we could do that in this example. So we're going to create a get user ID method. It's going to take in the username and emit um, and have an observable that emits this number, the ID, because then we can take that HTTP get and we can actually add our error handling and we can add some intelligence here that if it didn't find that user that we just return an ID of zero and then we can have our code smart enough to recognize zero as a um, ID that means it wasn't found. We could even add code in here that looked for it finding more than one um, and do some logging or whatever, because there should only be one uh, entry for a particular user. 
Then for get posts for user, we would then take an uh, user ID and we would use that. And again, we can have some error handling. We could also even add code in here that checks for that user ID being zero. And if so, it doesn't, it would actually be above the return. And if so, it doesn't bother even issuing an HTTP get because um, the user ID was zero and there shouldn't be any posts for a user ID of zero. Um, so let's kind of push those down and look at what our pipeline now looks like. So here are entered users going to emit each time the user clicks the button and pipe it through. And we are um, going to call our user service get user ID. Um, so this is another benefit of breaking it into pieces. We can then actually put this hunk, this get user ID, into a user service where it makes more sense and not junk up our post service with all these um, things that um, don't really belong there, that they don't abstract really into the post. They really belong in a user service. Um, and then when you uh, actually look at your main code, you're reading this code, this dot user service, get user ID, passing in the username. So it makes the main code that you have to look at and work with a lot easier to understand and to grok um, and that it makes more sense. Okay, so that was our retrieve related data pipeline. Now, one of the things you might have noticed on here is I've got this weird category thing over here. Now, category one, six, nine, well, that might mean something to somebody, but your normal user isn't going to know what category six was or category one was. And so that leads us directly into our next pattern, which is the lookup reference property pattern. So we're going to have a lookup table with category IDs and category names, and we want to use that lookup in order to display the correct category name with our our post instead of showing that ID. So how do we do that? Again, we're gonna to go to our questions. What do we have? Well, we're gonna have all of our um, posts and we can get all of our categories. So we've got our posts and our categories. What do we want? Well, we're gonna to wanna to change our post so that it actually has a category string in addition to a category ID. Then we're going to want to take the category ID look it up in our lookup reference table, and then use the name and populate that category. So then when our UI binds to this post, we can display that category instead of the category ID. And when do we want this to happen? We want it to happen whenever we get any posts. So now we are going to be working with two streams. We've got, um, or two observables. We've got this post category observable, and we've got our post observable. So how do we work with the two of them? That leads into our next tip. To work with multiple streams, we wanna use a combination operator. And in this particular case, we're gonna use combine latest. So we're going to create a new observable posts with category, and we're going to combine our list of posts and our list of post categories so that we can work with the two of them together to do this lookup. And you're gonna look at this and you're immediately going to think of some questions again, right? Like where the heck now is our error handling? Um, and also, how do we reuse these retrieved categories? Now our posts are gonna change pretty often, right? The user can be adding more posts real time. And so you're gonna to wanna to get that data on a regular basis and ensure that data is fresh. But how often do those post categories change? Maybe once a month, maybe once a quarter, um, maybe once you set them, maybe they never change. So there's no reason those couldn't be cached. And when you're calling this and getting this data like this, it's not very easy to cache that um, without caching this whole thing. And you don't wanna cache the posts because they're going to be changing. So how do we deal with this? Well, again, it goes back to our prior tip about breaking it into smaller pieces. And this time we're going to use properties instead of methods because we don't need to pass anything in. So here we're gonna get all posts this time and we're gonna add our error handling. And we're gonna get all categories and add our error handling here as well. And notice we add a share replay. And of course, when RxJS 7, now that it's out, we can change this to a share. Um, but we're going to use a share replay here 
which means that the next time something accesses this all category stream, it's going to replay the data it's already received and it's not going to go back out to the backend server and go get it again. So it minimizes your hits on the backend server. So what does that do to our pipeline? Well, our combined latest can now just access all posts and all categories. And again, since we've now broken this up, we can move the category part into a category service. So we've appropriately abstracted our logic into appropriate services and then encapsulated that in those services. Okay, but that's not really our pipeline. What's our pipeline doing once we've got our two streams combined? And that's what this is doing. So what Combine Latest does, one of the coolest things about what Combine Latest does is it will wait for both of these to emit at least once before it emits anything. So if you've ever in your code wished that you could get this and get that and wait till you have both of them to do something else, um, Combine Latest is your friend. Um, so what you can do, what this will do is wait until um, all the posts are retrieved, all the categories are retrieved, and then it will um, execute the code. It will emit and execute the code in the pipeline. What it emits is an array. So that's this array here. The first element of the array is the item um, emitted from this first uh, as observable up here. And the second element is the um, next one. And if you had a third one, it would be a third array element. And then I'm using array destructuring to actually name these elements. That way I don't have to be referencing posts as array zero and categories as array um, index one. Um, I can just give them names. So then I'm using the post array map to loop through every one of the posts. And what I'm doing is I am creating a new strongly typed post taking the original post content here using the spread operator to copy all of the data from the existing post and then adding a category and using find on this second array to find the actual ID. And if it's found, I'm adding the name. Okay, so again, um, we're going to get back then an observable that emits a post array. Um, because we strongly typed it here as a post, and that's what we want to bind to. And again, our questions, what if the ID is not found? <clears throat> well, it's not gonna blow up because I have this nice question mark, but it could leave the category um, to be uh, undefined and we wouldn't necessarily want that. So what we could do is something like this with an or, and then specify what we want as our default. So we could just have an empty string or no category or undefined or not specified, whatever we'd wanna say there. Um, what if there are multiple lookups? So we wanna look up the category ID and get the category name, and maybe there's a user type and we wanna look up that, and maybe there's a preferred um, type of contact or you know whatever we would want, we can just keep adding on to here we can have three, four, however many streams we want to combine. We just add them here into our map and then define whatever fields we need to store them. Lastly, how do we reuse this logic? Because now we're getting all posts. So what if we wanted to use this again for our post for a given user? Well, now we'd have to write all of this code again. So we're going to go back to that other tip and break this into smaller pieces. So we can write a method map categories that will take posts and it could be all posts. It could be uh, the post for a user. It could be the post for a date. It doesn't matter. Some array of posts and our categories and it's going to do our mapping for us. Then our, our um, pipeline looks like this. It's a very simple this.map category passing in the two um, values that, are, that were passed to it. Um, and it might be nice if this um, be, is able to do objects at some point that I could just um, pass in an object with that. Um, but we'll see what we can do with ArxJS 7. Um, so this is the lookup reference property pipeline. So I'm able to then display that category. Okay. So the next one is grouping and I struggled with this one just a little bit. Um, one, because um, 
it takes a little bit of digging in to really grok what the grouping pipeline or the grouping um, uh, uh, pipeable operator is doing. And also because there are a heck of easier ways to do it without using um, the RxJS group operator um, in my particular example, but I wanted to be able to show it just to give you an idea of how to get the grouping um, uh, operator to work. So in this case, I want to group by the category and here's my no category. Um, and I want to do this grouping. So again, start with our questions. What do we have? Well, we have our posts. What do we want? We want them uh, grouped by uh, category ID. When do we want it? We want it when the page is displayed. So how are we going to go ahead and do that? This is our grouping pipeline. So here is my group by operator. Now I want to be able to group it, but the problem is that group by expects an item and another item and another emitted item and another emitted item. And what posts with category emits is one array of items here, group by, here's an array of stuff. And group by goes, okay, I have this one thing, this one array, what am I grouping this array with? And you're like, that's not what I wanted. I didn't want to group the array. I want to group all the items in the array. And that's the purpose of the concat all in this case. What this concat all is doing is it's going to take each item out of this array that the post with category is emitting, and it's going to emit each item out of the array. So the group by gets um, post one, post two, post three. Um, so it can then group them. The group by syntax then, um, it takes two uh, arrow functions. The first one is a key selector, which is telling me what I want to group on. And I want to group on the category ID. The second is the element selector. So what is it that I want to group? You know, maybe I only care about the post name or the post string, but in this case, I wanted the entire post um, so that I could bind to all of the different elements on it. So my element selector is the post itself. So the um, next thing is that the group by actually emits this group. Um, so it will emit every time that the category ID changes. So if it sees one for category ID one, it will emit this um, group. And then if it sees one for category two, it'll emit that group. If it sees one for category one again, it does not emit again, it rather emits into that first group. And that was a little bit difficult to um, picture at first. Um, so what you end up with then is something that looks like this once you've um, zipped all of them together. So um, what this is going to zip together then is the group key. And I'm using of here because zip wants to work with an observable, not the number. So I'm um, taking that number and making it an observable. And then I want to two array, I want all of the um, posts that match that key in an array. So the category ID of eight has two elements in the array, category of nine has two elements, category two has one element in the array and so on. And by using a two array, it's going to wait for all the group buys to finish and ensure all of that uh, process is done um, before it emits um, and then what the merge map will emit is each one of these, each one of these little tuples, tuples, however you say that word. Um, so it's going to emit each one of these. And what that would do in our UI then is would display one and then make it disappear when it displays the next one. And that's not what we want. We want all of them. And that's the purpose of the two array here. So the zip for each group emits one tuple, the ID and the array of posts and then the two array emits all one array with all of them in. So there's an array around all of these guys. Um, so uh, here I just dumped um, the uh, console. So here is my zeroth element, one, two, three, and so on. Um, and you can then loop through this. So you can go through each of these groups or each one of these I call the group. And then for each group, we can go through its array of posts. So it's um, uh, group element zero is the ID, group array um, one is this array. So then I can loop through all of those and display them. 
And that is our uh, pipeline for grouping. OK, um, last one is autocomplete. So here is an autocomplete. And it's a standard kind of autocomplete. You type something in, and it's going to, <clears throat> it's going to filter the list down. OK, so start with the questions. What do we have? Well, we have our categories already, right? So we've got our categories. What do we want and when do we want it? Well, something like this, that becomes a little bit more complicated. And what's nice about this example is real life code is also <laughs> gets complicated. So I wanted to cover an example that was um, more like what you might run into for more complex kind of UI. So we're going to answer the what do we want and when do we want it um, on a separate slide here. So what do we want? When do we want it? Well, when the user types, we want to filter the list. Straightforward enough, right? But also, if they click on here, we want to open the list. So when they first come to the page, the list isn't showing. They click in there, and it'll open the list. But what if they don't have a mouse? We also want to open the list on focus. So if the user is tabbing around, when they get to that field, it'll open the list. And then there's this little X over here. When the user clicks on the X, we want to clear the list, uh, clear the um, entry rather, and open the list for a selection of a new one. So we've got four different user actions. Does that mean we need four different action streams, four different subjects or behavior subjects? Quite possibly, the answer might be yes. So let's take a look. All right, so we've got focus, that's a subject. Click, that's a subject. Clear, that's a subject. OK, notice we don't have the text one here. <clears throat> so in our uh, template, we've got an input element. What we're doing is we're binding to focus, and focus is nexting in and emitting um, the target information on focus. On click, it's doing the same thing. It's emitting um, into that click stream. Now, a lot of developers, or some developers anyway, don't like having all that logic in their template. And if that's you, you can instead do something like I did here with the click on the button. So this is that times symbol, that little X. And instead of actually nexting right here in the template, I'm calling a method. And you could do the same thing for those two. So here is my onClear method. Now, in this particular example, I'm using the bootstrap type ahead. And the reason I don't have a text stream is because it will give me a text stream. And it expects a search function. So we're going to build that search function and its pipeline. So here are our three streams that we created. Here's the text that we're getting. Um, and here is the search we're defining. And again, we're going to break these into little pieces. So our debounce text, we're going to debounce it so that if the user is typing really quickly, ABC, it doesn't look up A and then AB and then ABC. It waits until the user stops typing and then gets it. And we also have distinct until changed on there. For the click to open, we're going to pipe it through a filter because if it's already open, we don't want to um, tell it to open. So that's what that's checking for. Then we merge this debounce text, the click to open, the focus and the clear. We merge them all together. Then we combine latest on the operations and our list of categories. Now, why not just combine latest this whole set? Um, combine latest, debounce text, click to open, this focus, this clear, and then we don't have to have this extra merge. Well, if you recall, what I said earlier is combine latest will wait for each of its streams to emit at least once before it emits into its pipeline. So if we put all of them here in the combine latest, what would happen is the user would have to type text, click to open, set focus, and clear in order for it to actually do anything. And that would probably not be a good user experience. Um, the merge is more like an or. So if any of these things happen, if, it, if you uh, type in text, or click to open, or focus, or clear, then operations will emit. So if any of these things emit, it will emit here, and it will um, combine it with our categories. 
then our pipeline becomes relatively straightforward. Here again, we're getting an array. Um, I'm again using array destructuring. So here's the um, text coming from the operation. Um, and here are my categories. So if the text is empty, I'm going to display all categories. And frequently, that is what you want to do. Unless your list is too long, then maybe you don't want to display anything until they put in something. But you can deal with that logic here. If the text has a value, then it's going to filter. And here I'm using a regular expression, <clears throat> excuse me, but with only a hat, because I want to do a starts with kind of search. Now, if you wanted to pick anything that it matched within, then you just take off the hat and it can match within. This I here is specifying a case insensitive check, which we'd want to do. And this test then is testing um, the name of the category um, against this regular expression. And that uh, then filters our um, list. And we get our filtered list. So that was our, those were our four pipelines. Um, this is my uh, Twitter. So if you have any questions after this, feel free to um, reach out to me on Twitter. And the sample code for this is in my GitHub repo under Angular-Posts. Um, because it's managing posts. So I hope that was um, helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deborah. That was a great talk. Uh, and there are yeah, uh, some comments on the uh, chat as well uh, that you might want to look, look into. Um, and thanks uh, again very much for joining us today. Um, and yes, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. <laughs>